child, my mother would send me to go and chase away the birds in the morning because the birds would come and, uh, and you know, eat the, the grains on the ears of sorghum when the sorghum was ripe. And we, it is part of our culture. We called it Okurinde Nyonyi. Okurinde Nyonyi means to, to protect the sorghum from the birds. And you'd go there in a cold, very, very cold weather, and it was a, not a nice exercise, but you'd do it in order to save your sorghum field from being eaten up by the birds. Kigezi. It really made me aware that yes, sorghum is a very important crop among us, the Bachiga, and uh, we should love sorghum and we should love the products that come out of sorghum. There is something that sorghum does to us. It is part of our identity. You love, you love it all and you, you, know, you know that it contributes to your, to your existence. It defines you, it's part of your identity. In Ichigezu, sorghum is number one cereal crop that is uh, grown. It is um, grown by over 95% of the households. Over 95% of households in Ichigezu depend on sorghum. It is a food security crop. I can say it supports livelihood, but it's also commercial. It's a cultural crop, I can say and people use it uh, to feed all ages. The, the young, the, 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 the elderly, they all depend on this crop. family <laughs> na muno munonga amakanda tugene ha mugusha niyo yabage byenta sayitu kandi neco kunywa ari cecu akuba ebicori bikaba bitari munonga akunija naza mu maka natandikiro kwingo mugusha kandi bukaguri mu entasa mpango na hinga ho na nebitakuri twahinga no ne mundi na namashaza ku ngobwo bwire ese kabe kalije umugusha na gutamburamu na mpinga ga ka ka kota eka mbona nabonamu ka kilograms kabishatu twatambura nago twatambura nago ncayi na bana bato umugusha gurije twaturahinge mbibe yibaga bareta buhuri amwe na chata nombe buhuri kabine kara ya white chata nombe ine kara ya red embibo ndeyingwa kwabera nayo kandi zirije munonga akwazi kazi rakora jabana ebyo buhuri tucajihamu tujira ubwiro bukwazo tujihangura tujanika chamara tsera mabano buhemba hamwe ne nkumba kutuja turakura akurana naka ubwente ubwire bwa babubi ibintu byatandika kucuka byatandika kuhinduka umugusho mu kwatugwezaga umugusha gwatandika kwera kwanga kwera twaberaho twaza mu mundi umundi zatandika kuruga muje kusinga umugusha you see in the old times farmers would would know that this month by 15th rain is would come are going to come they would do what we call are planting if you know rains are going to come in three, four days, you can plant are. But now you have to, they have to first wait for rains to come, then they plant, and maybe when it has started, then it stops. Hmm? You see that interruption. Then it finally it will affect how the crops come up, how many farmers go into growing that crop. Actually, you moved around, you find some areas now, people are planting trees. Mm. <laughs> 
twagutamu ekibabo ky'omushana kije kigutere guhonge gutakezire ngenu guti turi kuguhinga konka turi kuguhinga kuke ngenu kwija turagwihaho turagwihaho amakanda nembibe yuko aturahinga hanyimaho ti tiyashuba kwera yijera tucekaho era tucekaho we know that the cavalry hills are warming up and as a result as a result it has increased some incidences of pests some incidence of diseases it has also reduced probably there's not as much rain as it used to be in certain places there's a whole variety of things that are alleged to be causing this but globally you cannot deny the change in weather in these places the warmer weathers of cavalry that used to suit the growing of these crops the way they are have changed and once that is done then it also affects the performance of these crops at those levels climate change has a very big impact we are telling you the intensity of sunshine the, the, the availability of, of, of moisture of the, the, the water to the the crop when it, it affects the, the final product. At a certain critical stage where a crop when it is feeding the grain and it needs water and the water is not enough, it will compromise. That's why when you are actually pounding to, to get the grain out of the of the we can call them the, the husks, you find its shape, its size, even when you try to squeeze you find some of it even it's not filled in some space, meaning there was a disruption brought about by the, the, the climate change. A umutindo nago guriyo guru kugaruka enyuma hakuba na bantinji reje omugusha wagure bira no mchibiri mubutakamwe no mugura aguri ora lebo tidarugo mugusha no gumutindo kwa tuhingaga umugusha gwa cata nunde ugura kora ubushera bwenyine hamwe na buhuri tugenderere kwiyamo ubushera bora rimwe ucabo bushigishire uburebeka bora kora kara ya white go ushera kusha 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 ushera kusha 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 the bushera is a very healthy drink uh, it's far much better than soda far much better than beer it, it's a, it's a natural uh, and um, it is said that pregnant women benefit from drinking it. Uh, I think there is a lot of iron in it and other, other, other things which I may not be able to tell you now in terms of the, of the chemistry uh, of that drink, but it's a very good, healthy drink. <laughs> Get to get chiga, go to the Hamugusha Guachat and on the business, the Mazemoka Yakanka Chateau, Mokuman, Ninequa, Aunda, the whole Nayaba Natura Zamba, and his unkind of widow, and go. I just saw Bushet. Then the Chokuan, the Chenda Simra, and then the Maba Yuan. Chaka Vidina, and you go to the Rotungu Zit, Concat Hakinjamu. Ezindi mbibo, ziba la jamuniza kabusikiba yenchi. Ngenu hati nizo kuchira munonga, zira shisha ga, zira tushisha la mgenu ka business. Kwa nkatu rajezaho. During my study, I came across 47 different shogam, local shogam varieties in this region. Not, not exotic, not one, but these local ones. But they don't have the same culinary traits. So there is a variety which is super. For example, we are talking about Chattanombe. Chattanombe is a variety that is known for making superior um, quality drinks here. So if you go around and then maybe import another variety and then you grow it and maybe even the local artist grain, it looks fine. It may be the, the grains are even bigger. You go process it, you get the flour, you find the quality is not as 
good as the other one. I'm feeling in the carry ho. I told you to go to the car. Go in the mess. I hope you know I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to the to go to the church. I'm going to go to the church. So when we, the climate warms, there are tendon things that happen. When they warm, that means that same cold temperature is not there. It's now warmer. And when they are warmer, diseases that use to be prevented from happening because of cold temperatures start increasing. Even insect pests that used to be low start increasing. And I think those, and when these increase, they start reducing the way this they eat these crops, destroy these crops, and make the farmers get less out of their gardens than before. When you talk about money, oku bobaza kuchijindramu, bakatwe jesa mbibo nun mpinga nunjio murembe, eyo mugusha no kutebere za sezoni kuonka kabuti tuwebere tule na kujangu, omugusha gwe tu gugumeho, tubo nenke mbibo ya mangu mangu. Erara huka kujangu waji hinga, Era huke kuruga mujubu. Kwa kubwa mugusha, kwe jesi mgobu hundi, kwa kutura lewa evi himbo haanyi maho, kwa atubi inga, gatura vihinga, gatura vitera, ukutu kwa abona. Kwa kakubi zire baatu kwe jesa kuhinji la murai nizi, tura kwa ataka manyua, tura tamu, tukabona kutechi himba, tuweja tu, turangu higwa mutura sharua. Here we brought these varieties, we are going to study them and we are going to improve them. Add more genes for resistance, for test, to protect these lines so that from losing them, they start growing back in those fields. So this is something we've done, we're starting to do. The lines are here. This season we're going to plant them and just observe them, take information about how they perform here even including nutritional status, and slowly we start a process in which we improve them. Maybe in a period of five years, we should have better varieties of those same lines. You know, same test, but now less damaged by insects and diseases, and be able to grow under the soil conditions that are there. The climate is not, not only changing for sorghum, it is changing for every crop, it's changing for everybody. So we are, in, we are looking at sustainable land management. How can we use the land despite the changes? How can you continuously produce? We want to see if the issues that are destroying them now, pests, diseases, we can help to improve them genetically, add genes um, for resistance to this pest, to these diseases, help these plants that are now struggling to perform even under the soil conditions that are here. These things we are now starting to study. And uh, what we hopefully will do is we can rebuild the, the productivity, the production of soga. It is a very important crop. I talked about the ease with which farmers produce sorghum. It doesn't need a lot of insecticides and, pest, and other pesticides. Soil fertility, we, we are blessed. It has been surviving without, uh, with less need of fertilizers compared to other crops. When you look at a crop like, uh, like Irish potatoes, the fertilizer requirement is so high. But for sorghum, for it, it can give relatively good yields under raw fertile soils. You know, traditionally across Uganda, uh, sorghum is really known just for food, uh, traditional foods. That's the, the usual bread, kalo, some traditional drinks. But potentially, sorghum can become a raw material for even the modern urban consumers. Actually, we are not, not only preserving the culture, but we are preserving the culture of incomes and the culture of having enough food in households. If we promote a crops like sorghum, 
make sure farmers are going to get incomes, pay school fees and other needs, and get food. <laughs> I would want to see this crop, sorghum, really continue into, into the future and uh, our, our children and grandchildren uh, are able to enjoy, to grow it and then also to enjoy this product. And it should not only be here in Kigezi district, but it should also spread elsewhere in other parts of the country. All the stakeholders must work together the researchers, the government, the farmers, the city stockists, all must work together along this sorghum value chain. And this sorghum should never leave part of this world because it is, uh, it is a food security crop, it is nutritious, it is a commercial because it fetches a lot of money. So it is a commercial crop, it is a food security crop, it is a little bit doubt to resist. So it supports this economy, it supports this life, and this one should therefore be supported by all the stakeholders. And this crop, this crop called sugar, must and should be supported always to live as an integral part of the Bachiga, as it gives them all the energy they need, all the nutrition they need for their survival and their continuity as a race. I think there are, there are people who have studied climate change, environmental uh, changes. We should definitely participate in that, in that conversation, in that process, in order to... Uh, because, I mean, it affects everybody. It's just not about Bushira, it's about everything, really. So we should definitely participate in that. Because if climate change affects us here so radically, you may find we, we cannot even grow our cherished bananas, we can't grow our sorghum, we can't grow our millet, maybe we can, we, 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 we may starve, you know, so we have to be very, very careful about climate change. I... Yeah.